And we are live. Good morning, everybody. Yes, connection good morning. established. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Tim, Randy, Ben, good our guest. Good morning. Joe, how's it going? Good. There we go. Viewers coming in as well. Welcome to Thursday morning, um, the 1st of July. June. July. Yeah. July. I have this July. thing. I'm not dyslexic or anything, but which which is good for trading. But every but June and July are the same month to me. Yeah. For, for the last five years of my life, yep. Every other month is its own thing, but June and July are just one big J month that just swap yeah. places depending on you know when I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So. For, for for me, it's July and August because it's just two hot months. Yep, yeah. exactly. It does all blends yeah. together at some point. But. <laughs> But uh, we are we are starting in July. June is over, and did it go by quickly? Wow. Um, but yes, we have a uh, a guest here today um, who's very involved in the company. Um, but Ben, if you'd like to introduce yourself, and I can uh, continue with uh, introducing everybody else. But you are the oh, new the new friendly face here. Good morning or hello. I'm Ben, and uh, again, topic today talking about computers and security. And I do have a background in that, working with um, different software packages and computers over the years. So, joining in today to share some of that uh, some of that knowledge and information. Fantastic. Well, we are looking forward to it. Um, yes, the uh, the topic today uh, was written on the Cow Report, uh, which, if you haven't heard, the Cow Report is uh, released every Friday. Um, has been for over 20 years, uh, and that's a publication that we, we put out for um, updates and then um, different uh, client emails, trading alerts. It's it's kind of transmutated over the years, and, and it's about two more, uh, which is an exciting thing. But um, it's a it's a very great piece to just to just tune in to kind of the market for that week and and uh, keep you on track. But that's available on our website, micromomenttrading.com, uh, and every week. We have an editorial on there, close to the top, which is um, a bit of an opinion-based uh, segment. But we talk about um, the topic that we're going to cover the following Thursday. Um, so this came out on on Friday, the twenty sixth. Um, and uh, as Ben mentioned, that that topic is how to protect your information online while trading. Um, and then we're going to tie in some of the of the hardware aspects of trading as well. Um, so kind of hardware, software, and and what it really looks like to you know the uh, the piece of equipment that you're you're going to be working on. So um, I think it'll be a great question. Uh, lots of room for um, questions as well from you guys. Um, any comment that you type in on Facebook or YouTube, we can see. Um, Ben's a great source of knowledge. Um, as, as everyone else on here, uh, I really recommend today to, to get any questions you have answered about um, your trading setup, how many screens you need, what type of, um, you know, what type of computer uh, you may need, or, or if you're thinking of upgrading, things like that. Um, a lot of really valuable knowledge here today. Um, so Randy, how is, how is your week going? How, is, how did June close out for you? How are you feeling? It was great. Fe feeling good. Good. Up visiting my, up in up in North Carolina today. Visiting my daughter for the Fourth of July weekend. Going to nice. get to go to a, a nice little small town Fourth of July parade this weekend. <laughs> there, those are always so fun to go to. What, know, just, what type right, population are we talking? Uh, I think there's probably about thirty-five thousand, maybe people oh, in this okay. town. It's wow. It's a it, it's a it's a like a little suburb, but it's a it's a small town. And uh, they have a really neat, you know, old, old time downtown, one main street. And yep. it, it, it's going to be fun. But as far as uh, June was great. I mean, that this market just keeps going up. There's nothing can make it go down yet. Something will. Now, it, it won't always just go up. Something is going to make it go down sometime. But right now, too much money out there chasing all these stocks. And it just keeps keeps going up. So uh, every cover call position I entered last week was closed last week for uh, all capital return and returns of between three or a 6.5% 6. and up to 28 point, no, 31.1% 
return. I had a 31.1, 31.1, 28.2, uh, 20.4, um, 14.1. That, that those are the types of returns on the synthetic covered calls. Uh -huh. And um, and correct. So wait, it's not a yep. not a personal record by any means, but that's a that's a pretty localized record for you. I haven't heard 31 in a while. That's a that's a great yeah, trade. Yeah, yeah. And that's just for one week or less of capital in the market for those uh, positions. So um, looking good. I mean, the market just keeps going up. You can't help but win with, with the cover calls. It's yeah. I'm waiting for there to be a correction so it could go down so that we can get in at a lower price and have it yep. go up. But um, so I'm, I'm always uh, kind of on my toes in case it starts going down, but. Uh, yeah, it but doesn't seem to. I uh, I pulled a nice twelve percenter on um, covered call with Apple uh, this week too. So nice. there, there you go. I I was looking at Apple, but I I, I wanted to get in at at uh, at a position below the one thirty strike, and it 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 just didn't go down low enough for me to get in right there. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 it, go ahead. But it, it's hanging in, and so um, I, I waited Monday to see where the, which direction the market was going, and then so I entered a couple positions yesterday and three positions today. So we'll we'll see how um, how those go for this week. So so far they're all in in the money, and and in the money is what we want to be. So yeah. how, how much are you up for the week so far? Oh, I don't uh, I don't know. I don't I I don't add all those up. But I did do I, I did do four micro moment trades this morning on my spx so that was a that's a total of two four six eight eight point six percent return so far on on those just for the morning and and it, i i probably going to stop on on the micro moment trading for for this morning you, you know joe always talks about the trader fatigue and the, i don't like to push my luck too far i get four yeah. in a row uh good good wins and my, my my goal is is usually right around ten percent, but I might I might stop at eight point five. It. Well, I think that's real good. I, I know I know it's really slow this morning on micro moment. Uh, Tim ended up so far uh, up about uh, five point one percent. However, yesterday we were up forty three point five nine five six percent. That's it's just yesterday. And Tim really shot it out with Apple. The apples were up about 43.61% yesterday. Uh, we're up about 70, over 75% for the week. And this is our the end, almost the end of our 112th week. As a subscription service, we averaged over 100% for each one of those 112 weeks. We've been doing this about five years, a lot of the corporate, and, and these guys still do the corporate account plus the phones. So, uh, but today, Monday, uh, let's see, Monday or Tuesday, it went to 10, it was real slow, and today was kind of slow. I think, I think Randy did fantastic, that return. Yeah, yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah rolling, rolling through these summer months, I feel like there's a, a, a tendency for it to kind of, you know, kind of get a little bit um, tired of the heat itself. It kind of slows down. Everything gets a little bit more methodical before that winter um you know, holiday season spool up. I'll, I'll, I'll call it, but <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you're not it. You're the you're the, you're the weak one. Here. You can't take the heat. You've been having 115 degree days up there. I can't you take this it? kind of heat. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm I'm sure most people heard it, uh, but I'm up in in Washington State, uh, just outside Seattle, and um, we got absolutely nuked this last week. Um, and only like 30 to 40% of the uh, buildings in general have AC. So, I mean, even the hallways were getting to like 90 degrees. Um, it was, it was pretty, pretty intense there for a while, but. Ben, ben got you a special thing for when you come down here for the, uh, uh, for the, uh, master's class in July. Yeah. It's going to be hot down here. The hottest part of the year for us. And of course you're coming from up there. Yep. He's got those helmets. This air conditioning. Oh air God! With the yeah. built-in fan. <laughs> yeah, fans on each side. I was also thinking a suit jacket with just like, <laughs> like yeah. internal pockets yeah. for ice packs. Yeah. Get yeah. like small little ice packs and just line the jacket with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Joe, um, Joe, it 
you're 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 probably just getting uh, getting them to be able to get acclimated a little bit right now to the to, you know so when they come down in July in Fort Worth it'll be like oh yeah this is how it's been yeah. for right, so you know <laughs> for for a couple of weeks. That's right. Exactly. It's like, for them. Yeah. Yeah. The difference is we have air conditioning down here. He's up there with no air conditioning. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, awesome to hear about your, your apple trade as well. Um, Tim is our resident apple specialist, um, knows it inside and out, and has uh, the proprietary ice charts to really, really show him um, the the near-term momentum on that. Uh, I'm excited to learn from him uh, later this month. We're going to be um, doing our first live event um, since COVID started and all that. Uh, it's been... Quite a while, 2019, I think it was our last in-person event. That's we're really year. Yeah. Not a year and a half. Me too. In fact, I'm not sure I've met Tim in person yet. Uh, no, you he, he wasn't at the uh, he wasn't at the, the when we did this the very first time in back way back in March last year. Yeah, yeah. So, time COVID time gets away from you. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Tim, uh, that, that last year. Yeah. Uh, Tim, how was your month? And then we'll uh, then we'll launch into the topic. But um, how was your month? How you how yeah, you feeling? It's, it's it's been a good month. Been a good month. Yeah. So yeah, there's awesome. uh, always there's things I can improve that I'm working on. But you know, uh, Apple's been very favorable. It has uh, had a fair amount of volatility. So it's uh, it's been good. And Ben, I don't think Ben's been on here since Tim's been on here. And Ben, if you notice, he turns his head a lot. He's actually doing trades. He's looking at his various screens, and then and then his eyes sort of look straight into the camera there when he finally executes a trade. He didn't say anything about it, but that's what he's saying. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's going on. Always, always follow those trades. Follow those charts. That's, that's right. right. Randy's screen is right. all the way on that side. <laughs> you see him. You see him check over right. here, and Tim's is right about right about here. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I've been mean, got a really, really significant push down happening on Apple right now. So, awesome. oh my goodness, go, go. All righty. Well, yeah, yeah, the market's dropping right now for some yeah. reason. So, if we're the oh, everyone's taking off and selling folks, out. If you're watching, we have a if you go to our website, uh, www.micromomenttrading.com. I think there's a at least to get into the micro moment trading, there's a button there for, I think it's free, free two weeks still on there. Micah. It is. Okay, good. And also you can sign up for our master's class coming up uh, 24th, 25th of uh, July and a big cocktail party on the 23rd. That's Friday. We pay for the cocktail party. We have a really neat dinner Saturday evening in uh, two sessions on um, Saturday, two sessions on Sunday. So it's really, really neat. And our, our uh, Tim's going to be making a presentation. Randy's going to be making a presentation. Uh, Mark, who's not here today because of power problems, will be making a presentation. And uh, yes, we have making a presentation. Uh, is it, Alex, is uh, uh, on? Dirk's, Dirk's son. Dirk's son, yeah. It's a, I think it's a short one. Anyhow, yeah, we, 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 and, and Keith. we have we have Keith coming. Keith, in. Keith yeah, Keith. It's fantastic, yeah. Keith. Um, I don't even know if Ben remembers this, but uh, Ben, you were the first uh, master's class that Keith attended, and uh, he had made doing his doing his credit spreads. He had made, and we actually had the brokerage statements. He had made just short. I mean, just a fraction short of a thousand percent in the course of a year. And he thought he was going to have the thousand, but he, he had the trade for bad. A couple trades for bad last week. The last week, but we actually have the presentation. I've never known anybody that made that much money in the brokerage account. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward. I was, to that. I, was, I was attending that one. Yes, I was. Presentation. So that's good. Yep. Yeah. I'm looking forward to see, seeing what he has. He's a he's an incredibly intelligent person too. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I think he has a perspective on 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 life, but also the market. That's that's it has this unique understanding to it that I just haven't seen in other traders. Uh, and, and he's intelligent. He wears a skirt. And I understand that, uh, that uh, uh, our other gyms would be there with a skirt too. So I believe the technical term for that is a kilt. Uh, a kilt okay. Oh, well, I always refer to the skirt. It's a lot, a lot more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doug's going to be there with his skirt. His kilt's yep. So. 
Ben, Ben will 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 protect the uh, protect the information that is <laughs> the name of the name yeah. of Steph garments. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, guys. Let's let's launch into this. We have a really really cool um, cool topic here. So, um, we'll just read the first sentence for you. As many uh, have probably seen in the news, ransomware viruses, scams, phishing, and other online threats have become a hot topic for large companies. Mm -hmm. Um, but you should also take steps to protect yourself individually. Um, and I would say that I have seen an increased um, presence of that even on a, on a personal scale as well, um, especially with the rise of crypto. Um, there's been a bunch of that. My, my, um, I mean, since it, since it started, obviously Bitcoin is a lot more secure now, but um, my brother He's always, he always he always used to talk about it. He he bought about fifty bitcoins at like nine and twelve dollars, oh. um, and got hacked out of them at like twenty dollars. Uh. Um, <laughs> and so it's always been kind of this this back of our mind thing. Um, now now crypto's gotten a lot more secure uh, and things like that. But but man, as we as we as the digital age con continues to to transform. Uh, I think there's such a presence of of everything you could possibly imagine um, to try to to try to take advantage. We're going to talk about some of those today, um, but this uh, this first bullet point is obviously uh, using an antivirus and and, and firewall, um, the kind of first line of defense. Um, ben, I'm going to be honest. I think for me and everyone here most firewalls and things like that are just annoying. How do we do it right? How, well, how do we? Yeah, so to go through the list from the editorial a little bit and, and how to do it right, um, you have two sides of things. You have the annoying and overprotected or passive background and sometimes less protected with it. Mm -hmm. um, but when looking at that, just a few things to look at for your antivirus. Windows comes with Windows Defender. Um, Apple has its version of antivirus as well. Mm -hmm. But when we say use an antivirus, something even as basic as Windows Defender, when you get a new machine, many of these days come with a 30, 90 day trial, try it for free. And you may do that and decide I don't want to pay for the subscription and you let that lapse. Um, just again, be aware that turn those off and go to back to Windows Defender. Something's better than nothing in that case of it. Also, if you jump to another trial, and this is what's gonna help your trading a little bit on this side of it, don't install two antiviruses such as, let's say McAfee and Norton or AVG on top of each other. You will slow your machine down drastically because they'll each be fighting each other to scan and keep up with it. So in terms of this, always keep that antivirus on. Your Windows firewall is fine. How do you get over that? It comes down to protection. I don't think on outside of Windows firewall, your router firewall, that you need to do too much more on a personal level if you're not doing a lot of um, if you're not doing a lot of uh, hosting out of your house. Let's just say with servers. But the biggest thing on either of those, keep them up to date. Run your Windows updates. Go in, update your router, update your virus definitions. Um, just setting it and forgetting it leaves a, a back door or a hole in your security on that side of it. Absolutely. And the way I want to set the stage for this whole conversation is, is that uh, last week we, we talked quite a bit about trading like it's, it's a business. Um, it has this perception of some sort of hobbyist thing and, and things like that. And every once in a while, you know, people are hobbyists about it and they'll go in and trade things like that. Um, but if it's going to be a genuine, you know, significant revenue stream for you, um, there's some things that, that you, you got to do to keep the building in order and keep the lights on and, and keep the floor swept a little bit um, so that it can continue to produce and continue to be that stream for you. Um, your hardware and software are where a lot of that lives, a lot of that maintenance and upkeep. Um, and something like that, having, say, having, you know, two, um, two firewalls that are fighting each other, that's going to directly affect if it if it gets to gets to the point where it's bad enough and there's a bunch of other open things on your computer, that's going to get to the point where you fill a cent later on both ends, and then that's going to start to happen on every trade. Like this really does. I want you to understand that it concretely affects 
you're trading and and leads into that when when your machine gets bogged down uh, it's a higher volume as well so if you're doing the micro moment trade like uh, like tim is doing here you definitely need that fast platform without a lot of uh, the slowdown on it uh, not to mm -hmm. say convert calls don't need to execute timely on it uh, but you do have a little more time to enter and exit those for the trade to execute when you're not in there trying for a 10 second trade or a 30 second trade um, so yeah. definitely um, i would lean that one towards the uh, micro moment technique to make sure that you are streamlined as much as possible yeah Mm -hmm. Other areas on trading for your antivirus, this gets a little more technical, but you can exclude folders. Exclude your program for your trade platform. If you actually are trading, I use TradeStation um, with a program on your machine, exclude that folder. It runs even faster because the antivirus isn't trying to protect a known program. Um, Interesting. So as we move on for those, um, again, this kind of going down the editorial uh, bullet points on here. Uh, the free isn't always free. I would encourage you to read a little bit more on that one. But this ties back to number one, that if you do have a lot of free programs, if you let your kids use your machine and download um, programs on there or you want to, run a program like Malwarebytes. It looks against anything that may have been installed that you're not aware of on the machine. So many of these free programs install an extra program that you don't see that runs in the background. Mm -hmm. One, it slows your machine down. And two, it's just trying to gather information. And that's how they keep those programs free for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. As we move down, password manager. This one I'll open up a little more for debate, I think, because some people love them, like myself. Some people think you have a single point of failure with one password. And the reason I like it is it allows you to keep a unique password for every site. You don't have to memorize them. You don't have to write them down. When you come back, you can update them when you are forced to change your password. So if you keep going to here's my password and you add the number one, the number two, an exclamation point at the end to make it unique, using a password manager is a great way to keep it truly unique. And um, also with the password manager, let's just say you have the same password for your email and your trading platform. That's a big security hole. If something gets hacked or that gets out on there, that leaves you wide open for it. So with a password manager, if a site gets compromised, you've only compromised one site and not multiple sites. Now, granted, that master password you use, you only use for yourself for that program, and it should be a pretty long, complex one. And that's why I say it's more secure than duplicating passwords or other ones across the site. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. I and I wasn't I wasn't much of a believer, but I've I started using one like about a year ago, and it's been. I mean, it is nice. It is nice to have, and and it does. I don't know. It feels more secure as well. I mean, if you're not using those, I, I think they're great tools for, for people here. If uh, if you're the fan of the same password everywhere, um, that really leads into the next bullet point, which is two-factor authentication, which basically two-factor, multi-factor. If you've heard this term thrown around, that basically means in addition to your password, there's one more check for you to get logged in somewhere, whether it's a text to your phone, an email to your account. They now have these authenticator applications that are encrypted applications on your phone to approve it with, um, especially if you're not using a password manager or use the same password multiple spots. This helps protect you. If you have a password compromised, even though it's one more step to get logged into what you want to do, it does help protect that somebody can't log in without you knowing about it or really reduces the chance of them logging in without you knowing about it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, even even in terms of strength of password, if, if if you do go the manager route, I feel, you know, a lot of those have autofill features based on, you know, you log into your manager and then you select what site or application you're on. And then it brings in the password from that. It stores them all. Um, and I mean, the password itself can be a lot more complex and have more inherent strength, even the characters used. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and again, that's just a way of doing that. If you don't want on every site, many sites are offering them these days, your bank, your brokerage account, anything that's financial, I, I two-factor it. Otherwise, um, I go with, uh, I don't always use that. So yeah. I see a question here of which password do I recommend? I use one called 1Pass, one 1Password. One uh, there's ones out there called LastPass. There's two or three that are out there that are decent with a low subscription monthly uh, purpose or mo monthly fee. Uh, but I prefer the 1Pass uh, the program personally that I use in my day-to-day -day and my business life. Yeah, absolutely. I, I imagine Peter also would um, 
I would, I would probably look at the packages based on if you're um, individually managing or if you're also going to tie it into some sort of shared um, network as well. Um, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, but, but the, um, some, some of those platforms are, are able to share passwords even while keeping them encrypted to the users involved. You can do a guest um, guest account for some if you're in a business account. I have those in there for business wise. If you want to share it with somebody else, it sends an encrypted login out to it. Um, so yeah. definitely, it's it's a use case. Probably the two big one big ones are LastPass and OnePass. Um, again, OnePass is the way I went, but its features fit my personal use case better. Yeah. I, I like one pass because it has a um, a hotkey entry. So um, basically, if I'm if I'm in any sort of of login, I can I can press a, a combination of keys and it just brings up the password kind of over the top of what I'm whatever I'm doing. Um, that's pretty helpful. So as we go on to the next bullet point, back up your data. That's pretty straightforward. I don't do this as often as I should. I finally had to get a cloud-based backup program that does it for me automatically. Um, it's just a great, great way with ransomware going on these days. If your hard drive crashes on you, if your machine's four or five years old, basically it's a ticking time bomb for your data before you might lose it. If you're backing up your photos from your phone to your laptop and you don't have them on your phone because you need the space, your laptop dies, you might have just lost a year worth of family photos on there. By doing a cloud backup that does it automatically for you, that's a great tool to keep them protected. Um, a local backup is just easier to restore sometimes or pull from um, for a monthly one. And it has less cost for a local backup once you buy that hardware. So just again, back up your data. If it's something that's very important personally or professionally, um, find a cloud solution that protects against ransomware viruses and does it for you automatically. That just helps take the burden off you remembering. Yep. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, sometimes the, the physical condition of the machine can can be unknown as well. You never know when, when that coffee cup is going down. <laughs> um, I, I, I've enabled my machine for Java, uh, kind of an IT tech joke by spilling coffee on my machine. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah it's happened yeah. in the past. <laughs> so. Randy, how many how many computers have you been through, Randy, in your in your entire trading career? Oh, I'm probably on number ten or twelve. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 just, just quick. I was lucky. Um, what the the laptop that I use for my main trading uh, up until last month, it uh, met an error message started coming up that would that said uh, an error has been detected in your hard drive. Make sure you back up your uh, data and find a technician. Then it would keep working just fine. So after about a week, and it, it, it happened right when that Microsoft um, hack happened a couple of months ago, then I started getting that message. So I didn't know, hmm, is this just a little like a virus thing? They're trying to get you to do something. So I took it down to Best Buy to their uh, geek squad and said, uh, can you check this out? Maybe I just want to get a new hard drive in here. And, and they said, yeah, and then I was going to change the uh, the solid state hard drive instead of the regular one. So they they went in, backed everything up, and checked it out because I said, you know, check it out. Is it a hard drive or is it a some kind of a a virus thing? And they called me and said, oh, no, your hard drive's going bad. So we'll go ahead and replace it. We got your data backed up. Well, they called me back two days later and said, uh, Mr. Bassett, you need to you need to come down. We um, we fried your CPU when we were changing out your hard drive. But luckily, we backed everything up. And so I said, OK. So I went down. They gave me a brand new brand new computer that's like three times as fast as the one that I had. And everything's backed up. Hmm. And they also gave me they gave me the, the hard drive they were going to put in my, my old laptop because they said, your data is already on here. It's no good to us here. You can just have this, too. So nice. it's like, oh, OK. So now I have a a brand new, much, much faster, smaller, lighter, and the battery runs a whole lot longer. And, um, and, and, and so I do have multiple backups now because I backed everything up on a, on a, um, on a drive as well as they backed it up and they have it in their cloud back. So see, I'm, I'm I backed think up now. Is case in point for Ben's I think I just I just got the picture of an insured car. Is a car hitting a deer? 
if it's insured, that's a good day. I I, I got a I got an insured car hailed out once. <laughs> that was all right. Well, uh, assuming that your 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 health remains, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a good day. I will I will add that. But man, but it, a hailstorm can be a nice thing. <laughs> It can be. Um, and Rand just come, actually leads perfectly into the next bullet point on here of be wary of email, messenger links, attachments. And in his case, he said a pop up that said your hard drive's going bad. So many times, those freeware programs that you might load, the ones we talked about earlier on that are free, you might get a pop up that says, We've noticed your machine's running slow. Click here to fix it. Yeah. And that's malware. That's trying to install things a lot of times. So you're getting those pop ups. And so yeah. that's definitely a be wary thing. If you get an email from someone even that you trust, hover over the link, don't click on it, and you'll normally notice it's going to a site that you don't know or you don't trust on it. So definitely any email, even if you know who it's from, be wary of links or attachments. If you're not sure, text them or call them. I tried this once, and I emailed somebody back and said, did you mean to send this to me? I got a response. It said, yes, I did. This is I meant to send this. That was great. I still didn't open it. But then the person 10 minutes later sent out an email saying, my account's been compromised. Don't open anything from me. So they're getting very complex we'll these days that it will wow. still verify wow. on there. Um, that'll happen. They've That's gotten more complex. Cool. I've seen one where you click on it, and it's Office 365 email, and it gets your password because it's a, a fake site. It basically mm -hmm. captures it and then passes you through to the real site. But what they do is they now go through, either it's a, a bot, an AI, or I feel it's a real person, but it probably isn't, goes through and finds information. Um, let's just say you have an ACH form or something like that you're sending, um, again, in the business world to a vendor. They may send it saying, hey, we've updated our banking information. Please send your next payment here. Or it's a vendor that you work with that you're paying one of your bills, and they say, hey, we've updated our auto pay instructions. Send your new payment here. You do that. You send it. The original vendor contacts you saying, I never received my payment. Um, they're intercepting things like that these days. So it's getting very wow. tricky on that. Um, so there's an overcaution of abundance. Antivirus does not protect you against clicking on a link and entering your user password. Firewalls don't protect you against that. Yeah. The only thing that really protects you against that is pay attention to the URL at the top. Pay mm -hmm. attention if it feels a little fishy, just don't do it or verify with the person first. Yeah. The other thing I'll do is anytime I ever get anything that um, asks for my password, even if even if it is legitimate, I just won't enter from that way. Say your PayPal, right? Oh, you have a you have a, a something something on PayPal. Mm -hmm. Thanks for letting me know. I yeah. completely exit my email, go through a new session to a PayPal site, log in, and then and then do it. You know, just initiate yeah. that contact. That's a good practice. Yeah. Yeah, because you're going to get in there, and they're going to have a you know message icon of an inbox thing. If if there is anything legitimized, and if not, usually then your account's fine and it's not. And and I will particularly say, there's been a big push over the last like year. I've seen to my accounts anyways on PayPal. Um, log into your PayPal. All this stuff. Really, just double check the PayPal ones. Um, that is a great tip, Micah. That is definitely yeah. the uh, type in the URL yourself from a trusted URL. Uh, yeah. Marion says, yeah, but not for the deer. <laughs> yep. That's fair. Let's answer some questions here. Um, Peter says, Carbonite is what I use. Uh, what do you suggest? PC, laptops, and iPhones. I use Carbonite as well for my personal PC on that side of it. Um, I have an iPhone. I love to iCloud take care of that automatically. And then... Um, and iPhone. So iPhones, I use um, iCloud. I do have an iPhone myself. I do use Carbonite for my online backups uh, just to suck it off my machine. And then for my local backup, uh, sometimes I'll go and do a Windows backup using the standard Windows utility and do that once a month. Is it true that Macs can't get viruses? It's not true. Uh, you can get viruses. You can get malware. They're a little more protected. They ask for user passwords, but you can still get viruses on Macs. It's not just a Windows any any machine, anything can get, and it may not be so much a virus. It could be malware. It could be tracking. It could be a lot of things, but yeah. they aren't immune. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I mean, this is this is kind of a situation where even if they don't even get into any of your trading information, um, 
I mean, think of, you know, you're keeping the lights on, you're sweeping the floors. It's like still somebody breaking into your building, right? Even if they don't get to the safe, it, it it's very disruptive and it's very, um, you know, dangerous to, to, uh, to kind of, you, you can't leave it unchecked. It kind of, it kind of blocks your, your, um, trading and some of the things you do. So, um, regardless, it's, it's really good to know. Yeah. I got one so from yeah, the in here. Yeah, these aren't always um, so much directly for trading, but by protecting your overall security, it lends itself to keeping you up in trading, trading and not losing hardware or having to go to areas like the Geek Squad for viruses or things that are uh, indifferent. Absolutely, and that and that speed, the computing speed, does not sag. It doesn't it doesn't bog down, and that's that's really huge. Um, Marion says, "Hi Ben, what do?" Uh, feel about personal clouds that you can buy for your own house or everything can go to your own cloud and not a subscription cloud. That's a good point. Um, I, I like those. It's basically the same area of keeping a local backup. It's called your home cloud in your house because you're on your Wi-Fi, but normally you have a hard drive locally that is backing that up to. Um, but that still gives you a single point of fa failure. I don't like to be the doomsday person, but I'll go on what Micah said here. What if you had a house fire or an earthquake, a tornado, and it went down? Your local backup may be lost. Your home cloud may be lost if you don't have something in the cloud. So that's why it's always good to have two points of failure of one in the cloud and one locally with that. Again, yeah. low extra protection. It depends on what your data is worth to you. I like the two options there just because you are able to protect yourself better. Yep. Yeah, there's. I, I imagine there's a lot more, um, a lot more stops in place for for the giant server rooms that those actually get managed at. And many times, since you're paying them to back it up, if if they even lost a data center, they have redundant backups in other data centers. Uh, yeah. So basically, they have backups of your backup because if they went down and you couldn't get to your data when you needed it, the lawsuits would be astronomical against them. Yeah, and they would mount in a in a class action form very quickly. Um, as well. As we go through this, uh, again, just if I get a little too long-winded here, more questions, feel free to throw those out, Mike, on the screen. Uh, if yeah. get long-winded, cut me off here, but I've already mentioned it, stay up to date. That doesn't just mean your Windows updates. Every once in a while, your machine comes with some programs. Um, it might be just the machine updates of drivers, which is what makes everything run smoothly. Uh, when you buy a new laptop from Best Buy, wherever you get it from, if it's the latest and greatest, Sometimes the hardware that's in there, whether it's your graphics card, your monitor, your audio, is a first generation release of what's called the driver that helps it run. So many times staying up to date with not only your Windows updates, but those drivers mm -hmm. will help your machine run smooth, uh, smoothly for the future, as well as um, reduce security risks of it. If you're using our uh, proprietary ICE charts on there, your video driver updates, always check those out. You may see a little better performance with those uh, those charts as your video card gets better and stays up to date mm -hmm. for your trading. Uh, now, how do, you, how do you access drivers? I feel like there's, it's not really, you know, prevalent in the, in the, you know, home of your uh, home screen of your computer. How do you, how do you kind of make sure even? Each computer is different. Uh, most computers today in that last three years, they have their own suite of applications, whether it's Lenovo, Dell, Toshiba, Lots of other brands out there, but basically that home screen, it says stay up to date with my machine, check for updates for my machine. And those are usually your driver updates. Those aren't your Windows updates. Those are things that your machine has put out there that says it's time to stay up to date. If you don't have that button or application, or if you're like me and you uninstall that application because I don't like it running in the background, slowing my machine down, go to your vendor's website, go to support, and most will ask you to enter your model number and or serial number. From there, it can scan your machine, tell you what updates are available, and then install them directly from the manufacturer's website. Uh, again, okay. this is the uh, paranoid side of me. Don't go to third-party driver sites and say, I want to download this, unless you actually know the site, like it's NVIDIA for your graphics card, Intel for your, um, your chips in the computer, but your manufacturer will tell you exactly what's needed um, or what you need to do to stay up to date. <laughs> yeah, don't just go and Google driver update. That, that could be... Yep, absolutely. Um, Peter says, can you send a copy of the bullet points? It doesn't appear on the screen for us. Um, these bullet points are being pulled from our Cow Report, the June 26th edition. Um, 
So that should have come to your email, um, Peter, if you're signed up for that on, um, on uh, this, this last, last Friday. Friday. Oh, last Friday, uh, yeah. And if you don't have it, please feel free to email um, the Micro Moment office and a copy can be sent to you on that side of it. Absolutely, I'll get that email address up for you, Peter. There you go. Um, so, um, so looking at that, the, the next one going into it, I, I list it as a backup hotspot. This is a very important, I'd say, in, in Tim style trades, but all trades. But the quicker you need to be in and out, if you lost your internet once you enter a trade and you can't get back out, whether it's a backup hotspot, the app on your phone. Um, I know, Randy, I've seen in the past, you travel with your own personal hotspot for this one. But I'm, I'm a fan of having that backup connection just in case. Yeah, Ben, uh, three things. I, I have my, you know, the internet at home and I, I have my hotspot that I've always got right next to me because sometimes the internet at, at home goes out, but I always use it when I'm traveling as opposed to going to free sites. But the third one is I always know where's the local place that, that you can go to get uh, internet in case, in case like, like a McDonald's or a, a Hampton Inn or a, or a Marriott or whatever. So it, it, if um, if I'm really in a pinch and really have to do something and everything else fails, there, there there's always the, uh, the 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 local establishment that you might be able to get on. But be careful about security. I'm I'm, I'm curious how how many people here just just drop a comment if 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 you have ever been been in a trade just because your Wi-Fi went down, your power went out, something like that. <laughs> I, I have multiple times. You just everything's going great, getting ready to exit, and then yeah. I've gotten the blue screen of death on my machine. If you're a Windows user and you've seen that uh, pop up oh, with blue with the little frowny face, I've had that happen in the middle of a trade error before. Error four oh four. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It is uh it's 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 kind of a scary thought. Also, um if you have a, a cell phone connected to, you know, a smartphone, which is pretty much the standard um, nowadays. Yeah, Marion's had it. Yep. Um, pretty much every platform, I would say every platform at this point, has a phone app. Um, take the time to go into the app as well. Um, figure out how to get to your orders and how to exit it. They're usually not very efficient on phones. Um, and you know you're going to be uh, a bit pre-stressed going into that, right? I like to kind of frame those situations that I know I'm going to already be, um, you know, if there's going to be any sort of frantic energy there, then knowing how to do that beforehand is only going to help you. Um, so definitely go in and, you know, take the time when you're not trading to go find that app, go see what it's about and, and see how to uh, see how to exit an order. Uh, that saved me a couple times, but <laughs> Here's one that I don't think many people think about in terms of their day to day lives, and it's the do not use an admin account on your day to day work. And if you think about it, when you get your first machine from the store, you log in, you can install whatever programs you want, and you can install whatever else you want on the machines. And that's great to get going. But let's say you did get a virus, you did accidentally click a bad link to try to install something. Well, if you're an admin on your machine, it can go through and take that over. Uh, one thing that I suggest to many people is create either a guest account or a limited user account and use that for your day-to-day. -day. If something tries to hmm. install, it'll pop up a window saying, this program's trying to install, um, please enter your password to let it install. And that should be a red flag to you that if you don't want it to install, that you just don't enter your master password or your admin password. Um, by working in an admin account day to day, it does open your computer up to more because if it is ever compromised, it has full access to install programs to modify files on that machine. Gotcha. That's a really good. Uh, that's a really good tip. I would never thought of that. Yeah. Again, I'm guilty. I don't do that in day to day because it is an extra step to go through, but it is definitely a way to help secure yourself by not using that first account that you log in with full rights. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Peter was talking about that uh, Amazon is target for phishing right now. Uh, so frustrating, yeah. And he says the URL is, is usually what saves us. Uh, still frustrating. Uh, what if folks figured out brilliant positive sides of life instead of something for nothing? Very fair. Uh, it's Melissa. Oh, hey, Melissa. 
uh, agree. And yeah. Amazon, they do have two-factor authentication now, so you can turn it on for Amazon even for your purchases. There you go. There you but, go. Um, so again, just last couple of bullet points here to uh, wrap yep. up my topics and open up a little more for conversation on it or other questions, but <laughs> uninstall unused software or browser extensions at the top of your browser. If you have a bunch of little bars that are up there with little widgets on them, most of those aren't used. Most of those are freeware and most of those aren't good for your computer as they have extra software with those. I, I suggest uninstalling those uh, those browser extensions, but also if there's a program you wanted to try, say, this looks neat, I wanna try it out, you said you didn't like it, instead of just not ever opening it again, take the extra two minutes and uninstall it. Um, it'll save you from security holes, from updates. If something is running in the background, let's, let's say an update service, well, that's going to slow your machine down. It's taking bandwidth and processing power away to maintain that application you no longer use. So again, mm -hmm. uninstall, unused, everything on your machine um, if you know what it is and you don't need it. And Thanks. The last one on here is we're doing a nice video call here with audio and this program has access to my machine. When I opened it up, it said, do I want to give access to my mic and my camera? And I said, yes, that's great. I trust this program, but there's other programs out there that you may not trust as much or may have some of that malicious stuff in the background. And so when you're done with your machine, cover up that, use a post-it to cover up the camera, if you have it over your microphone with a piece of, piece of scotch tape, uh, that can help muffle it. If you use an external camera or an external headset, much like I do right here, I have uh, this, I unplug it, and I don't have my internal mic on on my laptop that I'm working with. Um, odds of it happening, I'd probably say are low, but if it does, just think where your laptop's sitting, and do you want that information out in the world somewhere? Uh, we always hear the news stories about baby monitors, other things getting infected on that side of it. Another one that it's Amazon and it's Alexa and Ring, and they say it's safe. They're starting a new program called Sidewalk. And from what I've read about it, it's an opt-out program. They're pushing an update to your Alexa devices that yeah. allows it to share your internet connection with your neighbor. So if your neighbor's internet goes oh, down yeah. and yours is up, it's going to take advantage of your internet to run their device to give what they're saying is a more of a mesh, a better user experience. What I just heard is they're stealing my internet from me and opening up a hole into my network. Um, those devices have cameras on them. They have microphones on them. It's a great day-to-day -day life uh, convenience feature. That is a convenience feature I don't like that they're pushing that they're making you opt out versus opt in on it. So there is reasons that if there was a security hole, if somebody found that out before Amazon did to fix it, um, you may have just let somebody in on every Alexa device in the house. Again, these aren't meant to scare you and say, oh my gosh, I'm unplugging everything. It's just the be aware of what's going on with technology these days and what people are pushing out on their, their devices. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is a fairly casual thing um, it's just, it's just a matter of, of this is what our new normal is. You know, it's not, you don't lock your car out of this petrifying fear. Um, but you lock your car and your house, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of that same concept, I would say. Yeah. So again, this was uh, last week's editorial in the, uh, in the Cal report. Uh, another question asking about the bullet point lists. If you didn't receive the Cal report, uh, definitely check your junk or clutter folder if it went there. If you don't have it or deleted it, uh, feel free to reach out to the office and we can go ahead and get that uh, sent back out to you. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so we got some questions. Peter asks, Ben, are you going to the Masters? If so, we may, may we bring our computers? I will be at the Masters uh, this year, and I would be happy to give them a, uh, a cursory look over there. Uh, depending on timing, we may not have a deep dive on it, but I can definitely look at some of these high-level bullet points programs and, and make suggestions um, while I'm there. Yeah. There you go. That's Another perk to go to the <laughs> Masters. Yeah. You'll, you'll find, a, find Ben. There's, that's at least a $100 value right there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um now let's talk about hardware for a moment as well what type of what type of computers do you guys use um and what oh i just heard my own voice there um what type of screen setups do you guys have for your trading uh starting with tim uh well i use a mac with um a separate screen and i have a backup on a pc 
um, for emergency. I also use a hotspot uh, just in case, but uh, my main trading okay. platform is on a 27 inch Mac yeah. with a, another 27 inch uh, monitor uh, for the ice charts and uh, back up on another 27 inch <laughs> just in case. Yeah. Uh, we're also hardwired into the router. Uh, got off a of Wi-Fi yeah. hardwired. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I like the 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 immediate noticeable difference when you plug in that cable is worth it. Um, highly recommended. Yeah. 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 Just a safety, uh, just more of a just a security thing as well. And that's that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. Yep. Absolutely. How about you, Randy? Well, when I'm traveling, like I am right now, I just have two laptops um, so I can have uh, two different screens. Sometimes I bring an extra monitor or I can, you know, uh, attach an extra monitor. When I'm at home, I have uh, a hard or what desktop, I guess they call it a desktop. And then two laptops go on and two extra screens. And I am also hardwired directly into my router as well. And, and I have the gigabyte um, speed for um, for the for the internet there at the house, and so I've got all kinds of stuff going on. I can and now because my son-in-law always goes, yeah, you can just have one screen. You can have all these, you know, uh, tiling and what. And I go, I don't like to keep clicking on stuff. I just like to keep looking at the different screens and just have them up all the time. So yeah. uh, that's what I do. But but I can, if push comes to shove, I can do everything on one. Yeah. But but I don't like to. Yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a happy medium. It's nice to just have a, a you know, seventeen inch laptop and call it good, fifteen inch and and um, switch between those screens. But it does. I will say I, when I when I first started, I had a seventeen inch Toshiba laptop, and and it was um, it it definitely does take something away when you're when you're constantly having to to switch and check because everything's real time, right? So the second you take off that screen, you are now unaware of, of what is what is happening in this moment. And then as we trade a more current moment, um, that can make more of a substantial difference if you if you go away from that screen for 30 seconds. So, um, uh, but at the same time, I've also seen techniques with the ice charts to, um, you know, make them, them quite thin. This is actually one thing I learned from Melissa is, is there's uh, a smaller portion of the ice chart visible because she's familiar with that chart. Um, she can know what position that means without looking at as much context. Um, mm -hmm. and that's something that, that, uh, that she employs to, to get it onto one screen, uh, which is great if you're traveling, right? Cause Randy and I can have the same conversation um, on, opposite end of the country and he's on an opposite end of the country from where he normally is and that i think is is a core intention of of why people become traders um i don't know joe what is like what is the 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 mobility of trading is is a big part of that uh that appeal would you say oh absolutely absolutely yeah compared to how it used to be a long time ago, but back when we started, you know, compound stock earnings, what, 20, 20, 25 years ago. Yeah. Things were so prehistoric. Randy remembers this. I mean, you, we went through periods of E-Trade where you had to do it on the phone by punching it, you know, on the phone. And, uh, that, a dial-up modem. Dial-up modem, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and what I use, I use a Mac, if you will. And, yeah. uh, I use a browser called Brave. Brave has a virtual private network built into it. So everything's on a virtual private network. And then I have the serv service uh, called Open uh, or, or Clean My Mac. It's a rental thing. And it cuts on every morning and goes through the whole, does everything. It cleans the whole computer up. Nice. But primarily a real time monitoring of malware. And I've only had two occasions when anything's ever come up on that. One a couple of weeks ago. It said malware press, you know, so I deleted that. And one other time, a couple of years ago, I just came with one small something and what it was. It, so another lot comes up, but it goes through it every morning before, before I cut on and start doing stuff. Nice. And, uh, yeah. So one, one, one other thing that I do, 
I like to do my actual trading on my laptop in case the power goes out at the house. The laptop will stay on for six or seven hours uh, because it's got its own uh, battery inside it. Um, and so then when I flip on the, um, the my, my backup hotspot, everything's still on my laptop. So um, that, that's what I like to do. And, and then when I'm traveling, it's still all on that same laptop that I was using to do trading at home. So, yeah. yeah. Another good laptop, laptop, if you have to use your hotspot, you can go and, and get where well, they sell computers and stuff. These really small, they have your backup thing, you just plug in and plug that into the wall so it's in there all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know if power goes off here, you know, it could go off for 10 or 12 hours. But my laptop's got its battery, comes on me instantly, and then my the only way I need to hook to the internet would be through the uh, hotspot, and it's just got the regular, uh, you know, charging thing on it. Map plugged into that same circuit, so you're never out, you never miss anything. You just it automatically just all switches over. So Absolutely. It costs seventy five, seventy six bucks. Then you can't plug out in everything in the world. You know, you got all kinds of computers, and it's not going to have the capacity. But for if you use the laptop, then, you know, certainly it's fantastic. So. That is, and that is one more thing. Uh, also, we're we're nearing the end here, so if anyone has any um, any additional questions, please put them in now, and we'll, we'll uh, get those answered. But um, that is one other thing I want to bring up: is if you're a trader, right, these are all considerations. If you're just a, a, a computer user for personal things, and you're answering emails, doing things like that, um, you kind of have to consider that as an expense. And and you know, do you want a backup power supply? Do you do you want another screen? Do you want um, you know, something faster. Um, but if you're a trader and it directly affects even part of a trade. So what I mean is even if you go in, you know, and you're, you've been trading for a while, you're, you're starting to increase your numbers. Um, one trade can make up for a lot of this. Um, Tim, would you say you, you make or lose more than $75? Uh, yes. <laughs> Exactly. Have you so, since we started? Uh, no. No. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Um, you know, so it can be a fraction of a profit. Um, whereas, Tim, would you be in a situation where you could lose more than seventy-five dollars if your power went out and everything dropped off? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Just. Just. Yeah. Quick. Yeah. Go ahead. We, uh, I mean, on our, our account, we, we have a backup where, you know, we can call somebody in our office who has access to the account and they can terminate a trade immediately if we need to. So we, we have that backup uh, yeah. with our account. So it's a nice safety net. Yeah. And that is something to mention there is write down your broker platform's number if it's thinkorswim trade station, mm -hmm. right? Like Tim said there, if you lose power, you're internet goes down, you don't want to be Googling on your phone or Bing or your search engine for what's their support number, what's their trade desk number. Yeah. You have written down your account number, their phone number, their trade desk number. Um, worst case scenario, you can call them up and say, do this for me right now. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very important. Yeah. To have that, to have that emergency uh, safety net set up for you because, uh, yeah. you know, stuff happens. Uh, you want to be able to terminate a trade. Uh, especially if you're flying blind, you don't know which way it's going. Uh, particularly important in what we do because we're moving in such short time frames uh, that that trade can uh, go out of control very quickly. So yeah. you, you want to have that safety net. And there are also things that you can put in place. And I mean, it's, I mean, if we're talking about investing, that's just a, that's just a a really real world investment in your future self. I mean, yeah. it takes, you know, five minutes in a sticky note and it can save you hundreds to thousands of dollars. Just a sticky note on your monitor. I, I write it down, put it on there. It's 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 worth it. I hope you never have to use it. Um, but technology, as we know, is is fallible. Uh, Carl asks, what about Windows 11 in September? We'll do a follow up on that one, I think, Micah. I, I'll be happy to come back on and talk about that as it's coming out. Microsoft is still doing their early releases. They don't have the automated tool to check your machine out quite yet on it. Um, it is the next iteration that goes along with staying up to date with what's coming out and technology. 
Uh, but uh, we'll definitely do a follow-up on that one in the future. I don't have a lot of information to discuss on that today. Awesome. Well, I look forward to it. Um, it says, have it all on one laptop, and I tile everything uh, so that each part of the tile uh, I need to see. Is, nothing is hidden from me. Yeah. When we're talking about the uh, the multitasking on the same screen, I believe. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, Peter says, love the backup of emergency f numbers to our trade desks. Thank you. Sticky note for today. Good. Good. I'm glad. Fantastic. Well, man, what a, uh, what a great topic. What a great show. Um, this is really, really just directly raw usable stuff um, that will affect your trading. Um, if you do half of that stuff on the list, your computer, I'm, I'm just telling you, you know, we don't, we don't make guarantees, but your computer will run faster. Uh, and if you're in something like micro moment trading, um, I made this comparison um, last week as well, but um, it may be one cent, right? It may be one cent on one side of your trade that fills. Um, but just as we, you know, apply that philosophy to our trading that this is not the only trade you will ever do. Right. We, we, we say that don't get so wrapped up in it. There is, there is another trade right around the corner. That's, that's the guarantee, right? That the market will continue to move because it will. Um, and, and if you are looking for that long game, regardless of, of even what method you use to trade, doing things like that, that affect each trade just a little bit. I mean, even if that was one cent, every third trade, over time, that's a huge difference. It really is, right? We, we, we work in these small pieces, so we have to manage um, those small pieces and, and give concern to those small pieces. Um, otherwise, we're going to zoom out after a while, and it's going to be really unfortunate that we missed out on, you know, a few dollars worth of profit this year uh, simply because we had a laggy internet connection from some free program that we never used. Um, that's, that is, is the way that, that free is not free, um, in my eyes. So lots of, lots of great stuff to be, um, be considering, uh, great topics, great show. Thank you, Peter and Melissa. Uh, always learning the masters. Yes. Uh, briefly mentioned that before we, before we head off July 24th and 25th again, um, is our masters, uh, in-person event in Fort Worth. Uh, downtown of the Sheraton. Um, we got, you can't make it in person. It's also available, going to be online and streaming as well to attend. This is true. This is true. Um, are we going to have, uh, is it going to be the screen share of the presentation or will uh, will we see the person? What, what's that going to look like for the online attendees? It'll be like we used to do within the um, the seminars when we were live and in person there. We'll see the, the PowerPoints that are going on. Um, as for where we have the headshot streaming on it, uh, that's yet to be determined. But definitely you'll have the audio and the PowerPoint presentations available online uh, that you're working with. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's going to be cameras, uh, but but what he just said will all be there. So yeah. it's like we used to do it, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And and I'm I'm looking forward to just even – being there, there are going to be, uh, you know, topics that I haven't heard about techniques. I haven't heard about. Um, and I, I, you know, you know you're know. coming, you're coming by great. Yeah. Oh, you're coming. I by am. Bus. So I'll get you start here in a few days. As, as am I. Yes. As you are. Well, did you know, Joe, I've been, I've been on my way. This is a green screen. <laughs> you. Yeah. And, uh, I <laughs> was sitting on a bus chair. I, I got my, I got my hotspot, uh, linked up and, and there you uh, go. On your way. So. There you go. <laughs> Yep. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to uh, to seeing you all there. Um, this is where you can you can sign up for that event. Um, also, if you're curious about about um, you know some of the things we're going to be teaching uh, there, you can you can find us on social media. Um, our our content is very based to to show you um, what it is legitimately like um, a philosophy in 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 that that it that it should be um, representative of, of what you're going to be looking at. So we have uh, live trade examples um, on our uh, Facebook, TikTok. Uh, we keep the, the videos on Instagram to our stories, but they're just live trade examples of, of what we actually do in the market. 
um, if you're curious of, of kind of how that flow works. Um, and then I mean, there's even a lot of Apple trades uh, by Tim personally, who will be giving an Apple uh, presentation on Apple, um, which I'm really excited for. So um, check that out if you're, if you're curious more about what we do. And um, this Friday, uh, that cow report will, will come out again, or sorry, uh, yes, this upcoming Friday, um, the cow report will, will come out again for the topic we have next week. So I encourage you to sign up for that as well on the website, um, free report. And, um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you guys next week, Thursday, 10 a.m. Awesome. Okay, very good. Thanks, all. Thank Thanks you, everybody. for being here. Joe, Tim, Randy, we will see you guys soon. Okay. Bye. Thank you. All right. Bye. Everybody have a happy and safe 4th of July weekend. Yes, absolutely. Stay, uh, right. stay don't forget, don't forget as well. Monday's a trading holiday. Monday will not be open. Okay. Yeah. Yep. No. Sunday, Monday, the Monday's off. Yep. No, no trading on, on Monday. No. Sad to no. say, but no trading. See you later. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you, thank you for coming, Ben. I really appreciate your presence here. And, and yeah, uh, Ben, great to see you. Great to see you. Look forward to you're, you're seeing, you, seeing you in Fort Worth. Yep. Excellent. Y'all too. Take Talk care. You later. Bye. Bye. Happy Fourth, Marion.